Hi everyone, my name is Madeline Page and I am a volunteer with the Washington County 4-H and I am here today to give you five activities you can do with your fish while we're all home. Uh, as an intro, this is my aquarium. I have four fish that live in my tank right now. Uh, which is a 10-gallon freshwater aquarium. I have been keeping aquariums as a hobby for most of my life. Um, and right now I have four fish that live in here. They are all a variety of platy. You can see Catherine right here. She's swimming by. Uh, they are super fun and pretty. And I also have a host of um, black nearite snails that are living in my tank. And hopefully we'll get a video of the big guy who lives in here, Orpheus. Um, but they are going to help me... Uh, with our activities today. So I'm excited you guys are here. All right, so for activity one, we are going to be creating a backdrop for our aquarium. Uh, as you can see, uh, I don't have a backdrop on my aquarium right now, so you can just kind of like see through to the picture behind it and the wall behind it. Uh, this doesn't hurt the fish or do anything bad. It just doesn't look great. Um, so we're gonna create some backgrounds. There are uh, backdrops that you can buy from the store that uh, are usually this laminated paper that has an ocean scene generally um, or the classic shipwreck um, but today we're going to create our own especially since we're all home and this is a fun craft or activity uh, the products you're going to need to create this backdrop are going to be a measuring tape to measure the dimensions of your tank you're also going to need some scissors or a blade of some sort and some way to stick it onto your tank. So you can use tape, I use glue dots, um, or you can use that blue tack that you use to stick posters up on the wall. Other things you might need are glue and whatever medium you're gonna create your backdrop out of. So what I like to do for my backdrops is I create a cardboard cutout of the shape to use as my canvas. But you can use anything as your canvas from paper to poster boards, uh, but I cut out the shape. So here's a blank piece of cardboard I cut out and it's the same shape as my tank and then I do whatever I want on here so you can color you can paint you can draw um I make collages using uh magazines I only have backpacker so it kind of limits me um cards are some of the things that I've used from like past birthdays uh fabric is a great one I have this fabric which is uh, like a galaxy absolutely beautiful to put back there um Anything you want to use, you can use. So I made a whole, uh, stickers are great. I made a couple backdrops. I wasn't going to sit here and make collage while you guys watch. So I have two to show you. Um, one is this. It's just a collage of orange and black um, with some moon stuff. I thought it was kind of fun and sciency, and and I, I liked it. The back side, because the great thing about cardboard is there's two sides, I did a bunch of music. So I play the flute. I have a lot of leftover music. Um, I am not done with this side. I'm going to add some pops of color. Uh, so that'll be cool. Um, in the next little section, I'll show you what it looks like when it's uh, put on the back of my tank. So here's my tank after adding that background. Uh, <clears throat> lots of music. doesn't bother the fish. It just kind of looks cool. It actually brightens up the tank because it's a white background. Uh, I can show you. Mine is really easy to change because uh, I have a big filter back here that's holding this in place so I'm going to change it to the other side just to show you. So there we go, whole new background with the oranges. Uh, you guys can come up with some pretty creative stuff. Again, use anything you can find in your house and stick it on the outside. I also wanted to give a disclaimer that if your tank is not rectangular like mine, that doesn't mean you can't do this. Lots of times people have fish in bowls or in tanks that are circular or taller. Um, a great way to add some fun uh, stuff to that kind of tank is with stickers. I have so many stickers. Um, these are all space themed and I'm considering putting some of these on a backdrop just because they're really cool and I really like them. So that's one way to do it. Uh, sticking anything on the outside of your tank is going to make your tank look really cool. So have fun with it. All right, so we're on to activity two. Uh, for this, we're going to talk about decor in our tank. Uh, lots of times you go to the fish store and you can buy decor there. Uh, I have some rocks. I have live plants. Um, but you can also use items from your home that can be perfectly safe to put into your fish tank. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, before I talk about items that are safe to put in your fish tank, uh, I want to have a few disclaimers. 
Um, first things first, all of these are for freshwater tanks. Saltwater tanks are going to be a little different, uh, so be careful. Do some research. Uh, secondly, when we're putting anything into our tank, we want to make sure that our hands are super clean if we're using our hands. Same thing if we're going to use a tool to put um, the the decor into our tank. We want to make sure it's super clean, especially our hands, because lots of times we have lotion or dirt on our fingernails, and anything we're going to be putting when we put our hands in the tank, we're going to be transferring that potentially to our fish, and that's not what we want to do. Uh, so make sure you clean your hands. Also clean them when you remove them from the tank, because there's a lot of stuff in fish tanks that you probably don't want on your hands. So do that. Uh, the next thing is a disclaimer. Anything you put for decor in your tank, you're going to want to make sure is not sharp or pointy. Fish can get damaged or hurt themselves on that. You also don't want to have anything with too small of holes that fish can swim into because sometimes they might get stuck. So if there's going to be a hole, make sure they can go all the way through or make sure it's pretty big so they have a chance to turn around inside it. Uh, uh, third thing is that anything you put in your tank, I highly recommend you soak in water for a couple days to a week before you put it in your tank, just to make sure that nothing sloughs off of it, um, make sure it stays together. You never know. So just like that. Now, onto things that you can put in your tank that are, that you probably have around your house that are super safe for your fish. The first thing that's super easy across the board are ceramics. So any ceramic that you have that has been kiln finished or that you purchased from like a store, so like a mug, if you want to put a mug, I have this cool NASA mug, I could throw that in there. Um, if you have a mug with something you like on it, it's totally safe to put in there. Uh, as long as it's clean and made of ceramic. Uh, other things you can do are ceramic tchotchkes. So I have a couple little animal um, stat figurines. So I have this little cat um, that's super cute, and I'm definitely going to put that in my tank. And I have this little hippopotamus. Uh, so those are super simple terracotta pots you can throw in there as long as they're clean. So super simple one to put in your tank. The next thing that is pretty safe to put in your tank are Legos. So I have this Lego kit from uh, Women of NASA Legos. Uh, things you want to be careful with Legos though are you want to make sure they're super clean. There's a lot of crevices and holes um, and you also want to make sure that things that are like paint or stickers or anything soft like a cloth um, type Lego accessory you don't want to include. Um, safe stuff to put in would be like this rocket because it doesn't have any like painting on it. Um, the, the little figurines are probably okay but you still want to be careful. Anything too small too you don't want your fish to swallow. So Legos are good to put in. Um, the third thing we're going to talk about are plastic toys. So plastic is can be uh, tricky. Some plastics will leach if soaked for a long time, so leach chemicals you don't want in your tank. Um, that happens a lot with like cheap toys, um, so be careful when doing that. There are a way to make pretty much anything you want to put in your tank safe for your tank, and that is by coating them in a material called dry lock. And I unfortunately ran out of dry locks. So I don't have any here and you might have this at home. It's oftentimes used in plumbing. I'll put a link for what it is um, under this video. Uh, and you can paint items like this, let it cure or dry. And I would say for at least a week um, before you put it back in your tank uh, or put it in your tank just to be on the safe side. So dry lock is used for um, lots of aquarium stuff, lots of pond stuff. So it's very safe. Uh, so I've already coated these in that. So uh, that's why I can put these in my tank. But be careful, be, be mindful to do that for your, for your items. Um, the next thing that you can do is you can use, um, certain rubber, uh, spray paints and certain spray paints that are for plastic, uh, to, um, set things that you want to put in your tank. So Plasti Dip is a good option that only comes really in black. So it might not make the most interesting decor, but you're welcome to do it. Um, and certain Krylon paints are good for this. Again, anything that you're going to paint, you're going to want to wait a good week before you uh, put it in the tank. <clears throat> um, things you don't want to put in your tank, uh, just be careful about anything you find outside in the natural world. Wood is really tricky, so I wouldn't do anything like that. I wouldn't do any soft substances like a stuffed animal uh, or um, any food, you don't want to be food. And metal can be tricky because it can rust or it can be treated with something that might be difficult uh, or harsh on your tank. So stick to the things that I talked about or anything that you get at a pet store is probably just fine to put in your tank. Okay, so we're on to activity three. Um, this one's a little silly, but <laughs> it can, you know, be fun. Uh, I get super, um, I love seeing people's pet pictures online, their dogs and their cats in cute little outfits or in cute little photo setups. It's a little harder to do with fish. Fish are confined to their tank and they're really fast. 
Um, so I still like to do fish photo shoots. So one way to do this is to create little backdrops um, or little things for your fish to like swim near and then get a picture of them. Um, I, I have set up, oops, I have set up this little um, ring of flowers and I have been waiting for a while for them to swim near it. It has not been super successful, but with patience, I'll get some good pictures, but that's a fun thing you can do with them. Set up any sort of little uh, fun thing for them to swim around. Fish photo shoot, not going great. They will not swim into the circle of flowers. That's okay, that's why we wait. Hey, I hope you guys have better luck with this. <laughs> Still fun to hang out here. All right, everyone, welcome to activity four. Uh, this is to create a care calendar for your fish tank. Uh, depending on your fish tank, this is gonna be very different. Um, you could have one fish, you could have 200 fish, and those tanks are gonna need similar types of maintenance, but also very different. So please don't um, think, you know, I, I made a specific calendar that fits my tank, but yours will look very different from mine potentially. Um, the reason this is helpful for me is because sometimes I lose track of time, um, of what kind of maintenance have I've done on my fish tank or when was the last time I changed out the filter. Um, so this is helpful for me to keep track of my fish. Um, fish aren't like dogs or cats. They don't let us know when they're hungry. They don't let us know, you know, they cut you, if you watch them, they might be lethargic or puny, but they don't always let us know when they're not feeling well or, or something like that. So we've got to really keep track of it. Um, so a way to do this is to create, like I said, your care calendar. Um, again, very specific to you, but here's some ideas. So what I, how I like to break mine up first is in time intervals. So what are daily things I'm needing to do? Uh, what are weekly, monthly, and bi-yearly? Um, so that's how I kind of break up the different things. And here are some things to consider on your care calendar. Um, food. If you want to remember to feed your fish every day, that might be a good one to have a box for. Um, filter changes, water changes, pH levels, other water tests. I check my nitrites and my nitrates and my ammonia. Um, temperature, cleaning out your filter, your heater. Um, sometimes I keep track of the water color, how clear it is. Um, my air stones, general wear welfare of my fish um, is really important to me. So, you know, is everyone kind of perky? Uh, so any collection of these or others that you have and then turn them into whatever kind of calendar you want. My calendar turned out massive. Uh, so I'm, <laughs> I'm probably going to change this, but just to show you, here's my fish care calendar. Um, weekly, I have my quarter water changes and my welfare check. Um, and then some notes on my fish. Monthly, half water filter, half water change filter, all my levels, keep track of those so I can chart them. And then by yearly, I do a deep clean of my tank, um, scrub off some of the algae that my that's uh, a little invasive and clean out my air stones. So this is very much dependent on what you and your fish need, but it's kind of a fun activity and it helps you kind of be mindful of your fish care. All right, so our fifth and final activity for today is to actually just observe our fish. Um, there are lots of studies and research, and I personally find this true in my life, um, that watching and observing fish can be incredibly therapeutic, help with anxiety and stress, and especially in this time, um, that's definitely what we need. So if you have one fish or a hundred, um, definitely take some time to, or if you don't have any fish, there's lots of videos online to show just fish like, hey, there's, there's a friend. It's kind of blurry. Um, they're so beautiful and so fun to observe hanging out in their tank. Um, get really bad reflection on here and it looks like my tank's really dirty, but it's not. Um, it, you can just have so much fun learning about their personalities. Um, uh, they're so beautiful to watch. I hope you spend some time just hanging out with your fish and letting them be fish and just watching them. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen a snail up close. So this is Orpheus. And he is cruising along, chomping up on that grit that is on the outside of the tank there. You can see his little, his little mouth working and he's scooting along. I find snails absolutely fascinating and it's really cool to be able to be this close to him um, and see him working. And there's Catherine. So that's my gold, my gold platy back there um, swimming around. Uh, it's a little blurry, this video, I apologize, but... Um, Super cool to see him at work there. One of my favorite things to watch. Don't always get to see it because he's down in the bottom looking at stuff.